All right, so I'm going to be talking about Chrono, uh, big surprise. I'm going to talk a little bit about where it's been and where it's going. So in C++11, Chrono was introduced, and the heart of Chrono is these durations, hours, minutes, milliseconds, et cetera, et cetera. And Chrono also added time points in C++11, and time points are exactly, uh, if, you subtract, if you subtract two time points, you get a duration, or if you add a, a duration to a time point, you get another time point. It's a great little algebra that's uh, built into the language, and if you get the algebra wrong, the great thing is the compiler will tell you it's not a runtime error. So clients can access both time points and durations, and there's clocks, which is just a collection of time points and durations and some function that tells you the current time. So if you want to know more about Chrono, see my talk from two years ago titled uh, A Chrono Tutorial at CPPCon, so you can find that on YouTube. Coming in C++20, we're going to add several new du durations, uh, days, weeks, months, and years. This will help us deal with calendars. And then we're also going to add some time point aliases, one called SysTime, which is just a fancy way of saying system clock time point, but for an av for a arbitrary uh, precision. And one of those precisions is going to be called SysDays, which is nothing but a system clock time point with a precision of days. And it turns out this is key to having this time point. It, it turns out this is the Rosetta Stone for interoperating with different calendars. And one calendar will come with C++20, and that'll be the civil calendar, and you can write your own calendars if you want, a Hebrew calendar or an ISO uh, week-based calendar or what have you. And if you want to see more about how that's going to work, see my talk from three years ago, uh, C++14 approach to dates and times. At that time, we weren't sure whether this was going to be standardized or not, but the library turned out uh, pretty well. Uh, a lot of people liked it, and so it was proposed for standardization and voted into the working draft earlier this year. And also coming in C++20, there will be time zones, and that'll allow you to convert between UTC and any other time zone, or really between any two time zones on the planet, and that's more than just between your computer's local time zone and UTC. It's literally any time zone. And there'll be a, a new type called zone time, which represents a time zone and a time point pair. And there'll be a bunch more clocks. Uh, a UTC clock that'll deal with leap seconds. There's also a TI, TII clock for the dealing with the TII time standard, GPS clock, and a file clock for your new uh, file system. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, model all these different time systems and deal with leap seconds. And to top it all off, there'll be parsing and formatting for everything from durations, time points, different time zones, calendars, you name it. And if you want to hear more about that, see my talk from two years ago, Welcome to the Time Zone. And that concludes my lightning talk, and thank you very much for your time.